Okay, is everything working? All right, good evening. Uh, if it's okay, we'll get started with this meeting because I know everybody's time is important and valuable. My name is John Leckley and I'm with MSD. I'm an infrastructure manager. And today we're here to talk about the CSO 190 Green Infrastructure Project. And in a little bit, we'll talk about that, but CSO stands for Combined Sewer Overflow. So just a little bit of project background. This is the third formal meeting that we have had with the community. We've also had a series of smaller stakeholder meetings of individuals and several meetings with the council folks to talk about this project and to address everybody. It's a, it's a new way MSD is doing things. Before we get heavy into the design, before we assume what the neighborhood would like, we'd like to have a bunch of meetings. So we had the first meeting was a planning meeting. The second meeting was a conceptual design meeting. We have gathered input from that meeting and then our engineers, Pat Dominic and Jason Dempster, who is a project manager, is out of the room. We have worked together to come up with, based on the input received today, the design that, and that's what we're here to show you. We're going to give you, we have already discussed what the consent decree is. The planning meeting, it was, it was probably about 20 minutes and it goes down. So we won't go as much detail as what the consent decree is and why we're here. Again, this is to talk about where we're moving forward with the design. A little information on green infrastructure, just to refresh everybody how it works. And any other questions or comments? Hopefully, did everybody get a, a comment card? This, as you can see in the background, and this wonderful mic in front of my face, is being recorded for Metro TV. We've also found it's very beneficial that for those, it's a great night. So, for example, half my, most of my family is at a Little League game right now. So, Little League, work, sports, whatever you have, a lot of people can't get to these. So, we also put these presentations on Metro Television. That said, if everybody could have a little bit of patience, try to turn your phones off or turn the phones down. And then what we would like is write questions you have on the cards. You can have as many questions as you want. And what we would do is at the end of the presentation, we will have everybody ask their questions. And that way, because you may have the same questions as somebody sitting at home may have. So we can repeat the questions, address them on television, and answer them. So that's about the only thing that's a little different than a typical public meeting. If you want to find out more, if you're very interested in a consent decree, because we aren't going to go very detail over it, you can always go to our webpage. It's msdprojectwin.org. It's a webpage created for everybody. And for an example, oh, I hit the wrong button. Public input. And it's going the wrong way, isn't it? There we go. You go in, there's the public input section, and you get all kinds of information. Also, along with this project, there's always going to be multiple other projects and efforts MSD is doing to where you can tell your friends and neighbors to go on and take a survey online. So a lot of the questions and a lot of the issues that we're going to be talking about today, you can tell folks who weren't at this meeting, they can go online and answer some of the same questions and, and provide some of the same comments and input that we had today. I've already mentioned that we're in phase three. This is part of the whole process that we are going with the community. We've had the orientation or the planning phase. About a month ago, we had the conceptual design phase. We have taken all that input. We have put it into our design. And today, we're here to talk about the advanced design. We have heard comments. We'll talk about that. And, and what is some of the preferences of the neighborhood? So just a quick review of the agenda. We are going to go a little bit background on the consent decree. We're going to do, do a little demographic of the Portland area. It's really good for us to get an understanding of, of what is going on in the neighborhood and learn a little bit more about the neighborhood. We're going to go over some of the results of the conceptual design meeting we had and some of the input that we got from the neighborhood. We're going to update on our green infrastructure that we're proposing for the area, present some of those designs to you, and get, get everybody's information. And again, collect comments from everybody on the cards. So make sure, and we can give you guys as many cards as you want. We have enough for those in attendance. So a little bit of background on the consent decree. These are our waterways. These are a great resource. Whether you interact with them on a daily basis, everybody knows that we have, we, we have a lot of valuable resources in Jefferson County with our streams. A lot of communities don't have. We have the Ohio River. 
And whether you are just, you know of it and you use it, or you're an end user and you recreate like this gentleman fishing, the streams are important to, to all of us in Jefferson County. They're a, com they're a community asset that we should all try to do our best to maintain. The problem that happens, and the reason why there is a federal consent decree, it is a wet weather consent decree. And whether through development, the uh, pervious or impervious services, the concrete, the asphalt, the aging infrastructure, a lot of our sewers were installed 1850s or earlier. So they're older sewers, they're starting to crack, they're starting to fall apart. When it rains, whether it's via surface getting into the system or through the groundwater, the sewer pipes are only designed for a certain capacity. When those sewer pipes get overloaded, you have sanitary sewer overflows. And it's very similar to what's coming out here and here. There's two areas that are specific. There is the sanitary, there's sanitary sewer overflows, which is on the separate system, and those are overflows that aren't allowed during any event. And then in this area, anything downtown, when Jefferson County and Louisville was developed, pipes were put in place to take care of the drainage. Matter of fact, there was a lot of streams and small rivers and creeks that ran through the city in an area that have been piped and turned into hard concrete pipe. The effort was let's develop Louisville and let's get the drainage out to the river so that our homes and businesses won't flood and we won't have the drainage water. As we started developing, we decided we need to take care of our sewers. So our sewers were tied into those same pipes. So that's why we call it a CSO a combined sewer overflow. And what happens is anything and everything that could get into on the road, the hamburger wrappers, the, the cigarette butts, anything that's on the street that during a rain event can go to the catch basins, get into the sewers, or anything that we could possibly flush down our toilets. When they have overflows, this is what our creeks turn into. So we, under consent decree, are putting in a series of projects to help fix that. So what is a combined sewer overflow? As I stated, a combined sewer is when you have drainage and you have sanitary sewer going into the same pipe. Many years ago, the pipe was put in place. That's the way it is here. And in an effort to treat as much as the sewer as you could, dams, weirs were put in place so that normal dry weather flow would go in the pipe that would be collected by another pipe that would go to the treatment plant to be served. But there's very limited capacity in any of our pipes. So to protect basements, to protect street flooding, to protect home flooding, the CSO is allowed and permitted during wet weather events to go out into the Ohio River or to Beargrass Creek in our case. EPA has come in and said, per the Clean Water Act, we need to the best we can clean this up and try to eliminate this untreated combined sewer discharge into our waterways. That's why we're here. Just to let everybody know, because a lot of people ask, where well, exactly where are our problems? This is a picture of Jefferson County, and these dots, the blue represent combined sewer overflows, and just that helps with the reference to where this is, this is Waterson Expressway. The combined sewers is basically the old Louisville where the combined system is, and then the separate sewers, which are just for sewers, are outside the Waterson. But all those green dots, separate sanitary sewers, and all the blue dots, the combined sewer overflows, are the overflows that happen during large rain events in our county. So it's a countywide effort, it's a community effort, and it's an effort that why we're all here. So public health and safety mandate. In 2005, the federal EPA and the state came to Jefferson County, to the Louisville MSD, and said, no more. We need to try to clean up the sewers as much as we can. In 2008, we submitted a plan to the EPA, $850 million, to satisfy the mandate to go in and correct our sewers, to correct our capacity issues, and as much as possible to eliminate the overflows that happen and occur. It was approved in 2009, and the plan that's put in place is there's two phases. There's the combined sewer overflow program. Any and all projects that are part of that have to be complete by 2020. And then a separate sanitary sewer overflow program complete by 2024. So we are currently about 50% into our project, and things are pretty moving forward. The overflow projects, since we're in the combined system, we're just going to talk about that. All these dots on this map, it's, it's hard to read from back there, but the dots on the map are the combined overflows. There is approximately 101 in our uh, system along Beargrass Creek and along the Ohio River. 
And what you do is you go upstream of those overflows. For example, here's a project where you have the dots are all the overflows. And a lot of our projects, we're putting in what we call storage basins. It's gray infrastructure. So we're putting them downstream of a collection of those CSOs. And the intent would be is instead of those CSOs going into the creek or into the river, high river, they would go into this large underground storage tank and they would be stored there so that once the rain event subsides, they could be treated at the plant. In some areas, we're able to do that with green infrastructure instead of building the gray infrastructure. And, and that's why we're here today to talk about that. So before we get into a little bit more details of the project, uh, I said it's pretty important that we get a little demographic of our neighborhood. We would like to do a little public engagement and get a little some online polling. Because everybody, hopefully everybody has these. These are clickers. And basically, these are simple to use. Uh, you will see some slides. You'll be asked some questions on the slides. And you reply to the slides. These record your last input. So there'll be some slides where I ask you to do one, select one, one input. If you accidentally hit a button that's wrong, just hit the correct button. Whatever is the last button that you pick is your input. We found these are pretty interesting. It allows the entire neighborhood to participate, the entire audience to participate. Uh, it's anonymous. No one knows your answers. Uh, we've had some public meetings to where folks had some pretty important things to say, but they just, for whatever reason, didn't feel like speaking publicly. So we get to vote like this way. And simultaneous, the neat thing you'll see is, is that once you all click on these and it tells me the polling's over, then the next slide will come up and show exactly how everybody input was collected. And then everybody has an equal voice. So if everybody has one of these, we will move forward. So please, how young are you? And this obviously would be one input. The demographic here shows that 40% of the group is in the area for the 40 to 90, 40 to 49, 40 to 99, that wouldn't work. So gender, uh, same question, you, you get one input. Good. So these are, we like to get a little demographics on how you interact in this neighborhood. We have divided up the project area into four areas, and then the fifth area is outside the project area. So the project area for CSO 190, it is roughly the river down to Jefferson Street, and it's on 18th and uh, approximately 15th on either side, east and west. So hopefully, can everybody roughly pick out some of the areas and where they may proceed? So, and then everybody outside that area is area number five. So the first question would be, where do you live? And this would be one input. So it's about 50-50, half live in the area and half live, out, live outside the area. So this next question is, where do you spend your day? Yes. I think you'd be. It's roughly 18th. 17th to the river, down to Jefferson, and then 18th to 15th. So this is we like to see some demographics on when most of the where do you spend most of your time. So this one you can vote up to three. So again, it looks about as a split. The majority of the vote uh, spend a lot of their time during the days in the area and then outside the area. So um, get some information on businesses. If you operate a business, where do you operate a business? 
It'd be the same thing. And if you don't operate a business, six. So we have a few, a couple of businesses and one and two, and the majority of the folks don't have a business in the area. So one of the things that we have issues with is communicating, and, and we're learning the best we can, and we would like your guys' input. So if you could please, up to three votes, how did you hear about this meeting? Other. Good information. Okay, and then what are your primary sources of information about MSD projects? Again, up to three votes, uh, public meetings, TV, web pages, word of mouth. And if you don't have any other previous knowledge of MSD projects, hit number seven. Six, word of mouth. And we are finding out that as more and more of the method uh, that's part of why we're trying to do these. And instead of having one meeting, we have four or five, and then hopefully by the time we have the meetings and, and smaller meetings, it just gets it gets more and more. So that is pretty common. And then let's just ask you guys, how would you like to learn more about MSD projects? So social media, and we are, we are starting to look into that, and that's, a, that's also not a surprise because we're hearing more and more of that from folks. So let's go in a little bit more detail and talk about this specific project. This is the map you saw earlier that had, had all the, the projects that are in this area and all the CSOs that are under control. This project specifically is, is in that circle area, and it addresses what we call CSO 190, so that's combined sewer overflow. It is near, the sewer flow itself is, is at the end of 17th Street on the Ohio River near the 17th Street flood pump station. So in that watershed, and the, and the goal of this project is, is to capture stormwater from downspouts, hard surface areas, and redirect it back into the groundwater instead of having it collected and go into the hard surface or the sewer system. And the result would be is, is that we'd like to capture the first one inch of every storm so anything under an inch and up to an inch, so it gets captured into the system. Instead of going into the system, it goes back into the ground, it goes back into the grass, it goes back into the groundwater, the water way that it would have if you didn't have all the businesses and, and the impervious surfaces. Yeah. So again, uh, this is the area. The total watershed is about 142 acres, and of that, we have to capture two-thirds of it. Sorry, two-thirds of it is impervious. And from that, we need to capture 64 acres. When the first project was put in place, it, there was going to be a basin for this project. And it was going to be where the CSO is. This is roughly 17th Street, where it comes out. And that's where the pump station and the CSO is. We are going to do a basin. It was going to be a small basin. And it was a small enough basin that we decided that based on the, 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 the soils, very good sandy, it's from the, from the river, that instead of doing the basin, we could do some green infrastructure, plant some trees, plant some grass, do something within the community, and eliminate the need for the basin. We're fortunate in this area that we have the ground conditions that allow us to do that. So this is a design project. Uh, we broke it up in phases. There'll be three phases with this project. Phase one will concentrate along 17th Street, and then phase two, and then phase three is a little more closer to the river. We're doing that to where one, we're not, we don't want to come into a neighborhood and tear up the whole neighborhood up at once so we can phase it. And then secondly, we can make sure with the phase one, we're putting in place what we need to put in place, and then we can adapt and learn as we go into the other phases. Um, we want to make sure we have enough underground stormwater storage we, we have to use the existing inlets. This is a very unique situation, and the little blue plus signs you see is where we're going to do a lot of our project. In this neighborhood, 
all the drainage is collected at the intersections. So there is a catch basin on the curb at all the intersections. That's where the water wants to go to. So that's where we need to do our projects to collect that. We can't, you know, any other place wouldn't make any sense and we would have to spend a lot more money to get new infrastructure in place. So to use the existing infrastructure, we're at the intersections. We also know that the, the best design in the world, uh, and, and we, we, whether you've done projects in the area or not, utilities could be an issue. So we'll do this in phases so we can learn the area and the utilities and, and have less impact as possible. And we also think that this project can enhance the neighborhood. But ultimately, we're doing it in phases so that we can wisely uh, spend the money. So phase one, I already talked about, is going to be along 17th Street. Uh, it currently, the main, uh, the very large uh, sewer pipe that collects all the drainage in the area runs under 17th Street, and that's the overflow that goes out to the river. And phase one approximately has seven intersections that we're going to do our work. So just to give an example of what, what we're proposing, uh, this is a cross-section of the intersection at Crop, 17th and Crop, Crop Street. Mostly all asphalt from side to side. And then even on one side of the street, the sidewalk is from the street all the way to the right of way, solid concrete. One thing that was discussed at all the previous meeting is, is that all the work that we are going to be doing is going to be in the right of way. We are going to, that way, we have control of it. We can put it in place. We can maintain as much as we can. We also will be working with neighbors, whether it's businesses or private properties that want to do. We have a green incentive program. So that that'll be an additional benefit to the project. So if somebody has anything they want to do, they can get with us. If a private citizen or a business wants to do a green incentive project, we can work with them on their property. And we will make sure that anything we do works with it. But I just want to emphasize that all the work that we're doing so that we can have control over it and we can have the ability to take care of it will be in the right of way. Uh, there will be some simple maintenance we'll go over earlier, but it will be no difference than a, a typical maintenance. So this is Crop Street, 17th, and this is the way it looks if you took a cross section of the underground. It's the solid asphalt, solid sidewalks on either side, and then we have water lines, gas lines, the large sewer I was talking about, which is 42 by, 8, 42 by 63 inch diameter. Uh, we have a lot of impervious surface out there and a lot of room that we can do some minor changes that's going to help get that surface water that used to go into the system into the ground. This is just a cross section on how this will work. These are some cross sections of whether we go with it's, a, it's an arch storm system. These, these are arch pipes that you can buy that you can direct all the water into it, and it fills this up. It also percolates, goes down into the ground, and in some areas, just plain perforated pipe will work. But the effect is take that hard concrete, hard asphalt, cut into it, open it up, put plantings, put good dirt, put soil, put some trees, so that now that water has a place to go, get into the ground, and it doesn't get into the system. This is that same intersection, and from all of our input that we have heard, uh, the two previous meetings, we've had several stakeholder meetings and input from the council, of all of the, all the proposed improvements that we have discussed, the one for both uh, residential and business areas was consisted of installing a grass strip and then planting trees and the trees will be planted near the intersections. So in the previous example to where you had solid concrete from the edge of pavement all the way to the end of the right of way, we would come in, leave a five, six foot sidewalk, meet all codes, and then in the area put a grass strip and then trees. So just repeating, so what we have heard from the neighborhood to date is some of the aspects of the potential designs were as potential for beautification. Everybody was pretty excited that we were coming in, potentially planting some trees to have out the new. A big thing that, that and it was, it was good that everybody acknowledged it, is that the benefit of tree cover. Uh, the trees provide shade. It helps with the, the heat island effect of all the asphalt and concrete in area. So that was brought up at several of our meetings. And then 
a big importance was putting sustainable design. So putting something in that will work with community but also be easy to be maintained. Some other input we got was some priorities for the neighborhood improvement. And probably one of the biggest ones we talked about was on some of the streets, uh, if the project could do a little to help with traffic calming or help with some of the speeding or help with some of the, the safety concerns that came up at some of the intersections as people trying to cross the intersections. And then again, more tree cover. So you can see tree cover came into the effect and then some of the traffic calming on how we can, what some people call, do a little bit of a road diet with the streets. So from that information, uh, we've, we've came in and, and what I would like to say is what we're talking about today is, is going to be for the entire area. Uh, we can only show a few of the intersections. It's a large area to show all 27 intersections, but in general, uh, we're talking about the tree, the grass chips with the trees, and then in areas where there is high traffic, for an example, the intersection of Main and Market would be these traffic bump outs. And, seven. sorry, seven. Uh, That's why we're here. We are going to do. Yes. Well, we are working. Well, we are only going to do the bump outs on the major, like the smaller roads where the lanes are restricted. We're not doing the bump outs. So, for example, the bump outs are only going to be on Main Street where there's plenty of current pavement. There's plenty of the lanes. There's plenty of width. Four lanes. So we're only going to do those on like Main and Market on the major streets. And we're only going to do them at the intersections where per code people aren't supposed to park anyway. There is like 24 feet from the radius of a curb. People aren't supposed to park because of safety, pedestrians, and right of sight. So we aren't taking any parking that is a current legal parking spot to date. Okay, so like on Cookie and Market, there's that building that has the uh, temporary right. Part of our work also is, is that we are going to be meeting with everybody to make sure whatever we do put in place will work. If there's a business that a bump out is not going to 100 percent work at where we want to, we won't do the bump out. But this is part of this discussion is, is that we've already heard from all of our input meetings we've had to date that bump outs would be desirable in areas where we have the heavy and, and the, the fast construction and there's concerns of pedestrian strain. Well, that's probably a street that wouldn't have the bump outs. That's a street that probably would not have the bump outs. But it, the bump outs would be specifically on Main and Market. They wouldn't be on the side streets. Right. Okay. Well, that's why we're here. We'll take that note. For, for right now, we're proposing. Right. Yeah.
Well, again, thank you. That's why we, we, we need this input. Uh, you know, and again, the intent of the bump ads, where they would, where they would go, they would only go at the intersections and would be put in place and at the width to where people, one, shouldn't be parking anyway, and also they would not extend out until what are the uh, assigned and approved driving lanes. So. Based on input that the community has given us to date and all the meetings we've had to date. Uh, we've, well, okay. Well, and, and again, we, we've had, you can go on and, and look at the presentations. We have presented this to, to, and there's a lot of folks here. We've had a couple of stakeholder meetings and a lot of businesses owners that are in the area that didn't, didn't attend tonight. I'm not exactly sure why, but we, we've, we've met with Metro, we've met with council folks, we've met with count, p folks of people. Yes. We've had a series of, of input meetings, and this is just another input meeting. Well, that's why you're here tonight. So we're here to hear your comments and, and provide input. Can we? And are we, there, there's actually two projects in the Portland area. There's a basin project and there's a CSO 190 project. So we also may be confusing, the, we may, some folks may be confusing the two projects. So that's also happened because you are here for the last, That's, that's correct. 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 Right. Well, you weren't here at the, you weren't, yeah. Well, we had a planning meeting here that I don't think you were at for our project. I think you were at the planning meeting for the basin, but in an effort to keep this going and, and, and to reserve the questions toward the end. Can we, please, we got your input. We've heard that bump outs, at least for this group, is not, a, not liked. Uh, we should maybe look at that uh, on, on market. Uh, and w what we could do is, I think when we go through some of these, everybody's gonna have a chance to provide their input. You get to use the clickers and you get to tell us your satisfaction of these different things. So let's, I think if we move forward. So this is just zooming in to show, uh, you know, the, the, at 17th and West Main, we were just proposing just at the median intersections and the bump apps would only come out on Main Street. There would be no bump apps, so there'd be no loss of uh, traffic on 17th and there'd be no loss of traffic as far as what is supposed to be the legal traffic patterns and the legal parking patterns on the intersection. And then just going down to 17th and Market, the same thing. Um, and you can see here, you know, the bump head is just in the one area, and then one works working in the areas. We don't, we don't have that drawn on there, but the intent of where, where the hard lines are, at least for our design. I know it, it's, hard for me to, it's hard for me to do this and then also do that. So hopefully I'm close. <laughs> the hard lines where we're putting our system is within the areas we talked about. So we're not in what is the driving lanes or not in what is the bike lanes. We are avoiding those. Our whole intent is to not take away any existing legal approved driving lanes and not any existing. We've already met with Dan O'Day with Metro and they were very bully about, hey, we just put a bike lane in. You can't mess with our bike lane. Okay, we won't mess with the bike lane. He was also very bully. You can't mess with any parking. So we said, well, is there some restrictions? And he came back and said, yes, 24 feet from the radius of the curve, you can't park. It's illegal to park at these intersections. Oh, so we can do some of this work there. It'll work. So we're not taking away what is parking. Yeah. Actually, move the bus stop. It may actually, it is, you know, 
Yes, and that is something we do have to, we do have to make sure we get with TARC and we work with them. Yes. Right, and one thing we want to do with them is, is that we want to work with them, make sure they're in the right place. They're great information spots, so we can like put messages and stuff on the bus stops about green and infrastructure and all that kind of stuff, kind of educational type things. So we kind of get double credit for that. So we definitely are going to be working with TARC to make sure, one, we're in place. And what we're hoping is, is that we can put a nice bus stop in a place where there's some nice trees and landscapes around it. So when people are kind of hanging out waiting for the bus, they're in a nice, cool treat area, and they're not standing up. So we have already made contacts, and we're working with the TARC folks. Okay. Uh, so when we're talking about options for the bump outs, if they happen, if they're in an area, one thing we definitely need some input from you guys would be is, what can we put in the bump outs? Um, it could just be grass, it could be some trees, it could be some plantings. And each option comes with some different considerations. So I'm just going to go over some very generic considerations and then come back. Whether it's bump outs or it's just the strips without the bump outs, one option is, is that we just come back with the grass. Uh, so it's, a, it's pretty simple. It's a, it's a first line option. It's the least installation and it says highest maintenance, but what that would be is it's just regular grass cutting. And we just want to make sure we've talked with everybody. Like, there could be a resident today that has sidewalk from the, all the way to the road that now, once this project is done, there could be a strip of grass, just a normal, regular maintenance of mowing that grass. So this is bump outs. If you have the bump outs, or if it's just the normal grass without the bump outs, that's the one option. The section option, and, and this is the option that and all our input we got today was, was most desired would be the grass and then you have the trees planted within the grass areas. This is more expensive, a little bit more installation, and it, it, it's a little bit more mid-level maintenance, grass and a tree. Uh, MSD will have a contractor in place that at, at a minimum quarterly will go around and just make sure the trees are healthy and make sure to take care of them. We'll also have some long-term warranties on the trees, if something starts happening to them or one doesn't live, but it does add a little bit more to the project. And then obviously the most evolved of it would be that at the bump outs, and it would only really work at the bump outs, would be some more extensive landscaping. Some native grasses, ornamental shrubs, put some things in place to where, for an example, we thought some of these planting areas working with businesses you could put some trees and some grasses out that you don't have to mow, that they just grow, and then you have the typical seasonal maintenance. You know, if it's ornamental grasses, you cut them down the, the first of the year, but you don't have that where you have to two or three times a year go out with a lawnmower and mow the grass strips. So it's much more expensive insulation. It's more potentially warranty issues on MSD, but as I stated, if you could put a good grass ground cover, for an example, in there under the trees, it's almost, once it's established and in place, it's very little maintenance. Uh, bump outs with grass. Okay. So back to the polling. Yes. Where appropriate, uh, if there's a lot of overhead lines or we're close to businesses and such, we have to kind of watch the species. If there's some areas like neighborhoods where we could put in good larger trees that will grow and have the shade, we will do that. The one thing we don't want to do is, because I've seen it a lot, you put in a, a row of really nice sycamores and after about 10 years they're cut in half because LG&E is, because is, they're not going to be, they're not going to be nice when they come in and take care of them. So we'll have to work with what's there. Our, our intent is to put in what suits the situation. So uh, if we can remember, option one was just the grass. If everybody would vote how they feel, the option one and for a residential area, it's just the grass, no trees, no planting. Whether you do the bump outs or you do the, just the curb improvements and the sidewalk improvements, if everybody could vote how they feel on that.
So the majority of the votes, uh, half of the room, is, is, that is that is not a desired uh, solution. So that same option uh, for a business area. Uh, even more, uh, a little bit more of the majority said that that was unsuited. So real quick, reviewing it, so now we have the grass with the trees, whether it's bump outs or whether it's just the sidewalk improvements with the grass strip and the trees, we're gonna do the same. So the suitability of option two, so now we're adding the, the grass strips with the trees uh, for a residential area. So it looks like it's a tie on everything. So we got uh, about a third of the group say it's unsuitable, and uh, we have a third of the group that says it's somewhat suitable. So now that option of the grass strip with the trees uh, for a business area. And the majority of the room says it's, it's not a good idea. So now we have the most uh, extensive, which would be some landscaping in the area around and near the trees. And then in the other areas would be the grass strips, ornamental grasses, street trees, shrubs. Uh, for, so this for a residential area. very suitable. A lot of people like that. A third of the room thought that was good and we have a little bit more on the somewhat suitable and suitable range. And the mean is, I can't quite read the mean, but it's there. Four point. So if everybody could please put, provide their input for a business area. So half the room liked that idea for a business area. So thanks, that helped. Um, just real quick before we get into any open questions, just how satisfied are you with this process? One more, let it go. Unsatisfied and so unsatisfied. And then, okay, so the next step is, is, is to be honest with you, we want to evaluate your input and we want to use that input for the final design. As I said at the beginning of this project, we're not coming to you at a construction meeting saying, here's a set of plans, here's what we're going to do. We're coming to you guys to get some input on how we can get the plans that are put in place that's better for the community. So what we need to do is we need to get the final design in place. We need to get your input, get the final design in place, and then get approval from EPA the project needs to make some, it needs to do what is intended to do, which is remove the water from the sewer system so we don't have the overflows. And then ultimately, once we get all in place, we'll come back with you in August, show you the final design, and then also talk with you guys of what we can expect during construction. Um, construction could start soon after that in August and be finished by the end for this area. What we would like to do is, is that at any time, your input after this meeting, uh, please talk with us, send information out to your friends, your neighbors, comments, IOAP at msdlu.org. There's going to be a survey, the same survey you guys took, the, the, whether the different types of plannings for the different types of areas. We will get all that input in and we would like as much input as we can get as we're going through this process. Just some project schedules as we talked about. Phase one, we're hoping to get it out in July, come back with everybody in, in August and talk about what we're going to be doing. And then the following phases will be the following year in May of 2016 and then March of 2017. And the project ultimately has to be done and certified uh, through the EPA December 2017. Again, as I stated, please go on our site. There's other information about that. 
I mentioned it now several times that you can invite friends and neighbors to go online and take the same online survey that we've had today. There's also areas in the survey that you can type in and provide comments and provide comments to MSD. So input is why we're here. For general information, say if there's anything I didn't talk about, uh, you want information on the MSD about any other thing, our number is 587-0603. It's answered at all times. And if there's other, any other general comments, a uh, representative of our customer service, Steve Tedder's in the back. He can talk to you about any other issues that we haven't talked about with tonight's project. And I guess this would be the time to where if anybody has comment cards, we can collect them and then answer the questions. Roughly 18th Street, 15th, the river, and Jefferson. Sorry. Did everybody hear that? 18th, 15th, Jefferson, and the river. And basically what happens is, is that is the sewer shed or the watershed for that CSO. That red line represents the gravity. If a drop of rain hits within that red line, is collected by the drainage system, the sewers, and it goes, it goes to the main line that's in 17th Street, and then it goes out that overflow, which is at the end of 17th Street, near the 17th Street flood pump station. So that's what we're defined by. We're defined by that watershed, because we, anything that we collect here goes to a different way, so it doesn't improve this. So that's why we picked the area. 27 it's pretty impressive that if you take off the hardscape the concrete and the asphalt uh, it's pretty impressive the sandy soils we have and the amount of water it can absorb uh, matter of fact the infrastructure projects that we put in place today the April 3rd rain, which in some areas was a 500-year event, none of our infrastructures were flooded or overflowed. They all absorbed the event. And only one, I will take it back, one of them filled up a little bit, but it was one that had been dumped on and compacted probably by traffic and by some other debris and garbage and stuff. But everything else, uh, it's, it's, it's actually kind of impressive, the amount of volume well, it's what nature wants to do. You know, without us here, it wants to take all that and get it into the ground and, and help with itself. So. Yes, yes, a good question. If you want information on, MSD has a program, it's a plumbing modification program that we will help you. Uh, if you have some modification, backflow valves, some pumps, some of those things that need to be disconnected from the sewer, or you need a backflow valve to help you from the sewer, we have a program for that. We also, as part of the program is, is that we will offer residential businesses a hundred dollars per downspout. I know, a hundred dollars per downspout to disconnect. So for example, I, I approved a check request yesterday for a home that had nine downspouts. They got $900 to disconnect their downspouts. And what we do is we have documentation in the back. Steve can get with you. You can also get online. You can fill it out. We'll come and inspect it, and once you do the work, we'll inspect it again. I get the inspection that's checked, and then we cut you a check. But that's, that doesn't mean like you disconnect it. You can't just like put it out onto the sidewalk and go out to the sewer, right? Like you like, won't get the check for that. It's just like you have to have something for different things. Right? No, it, if there is like, for example, a, a catch basin on the corner, and you can direct it that it'll go across to that catch basin, then that's, yeah. We, we'll, we'll come out to inspect it at first. We've had some situations where especially homes are really, really close to where somebody being, being the, the best person in the world disconnected his downstop, but he didn't think that now it goes straight into the basement of the guy next to him. So we'll go out and provide a little bit of guidance to say, well, 
you know, and we've done that. We sit there and said, you don't disconnect this one here because you could cause a problem with your neighbor, you could cause a problem with you, but these other four, you can disconnect and put a splash block and it'll go right to uh, the catch basin on the street or the easement or the drainage and stuff like that. So I just want to add one thing. In this area, we want as much flow to go to the right of the way as possible right. because we're building green projects in the right of the way so it's more water we can capture. So that, that helps us a lot in this area. Yeah. So, Yes, we want as many downspouts that we can get disconnected so we can water these trees and these plants and stuff and it'll help sustain them. Plus it, as Jason says, it helps us with our uh, removal. Yes. You know, I have a question. Sure. Do you, uh, do you all have a date for the overflow that, that y'all are planning on? Uh, that y'all be uh, doing soil samples over the flow wall? Well, we hope construction for our project, the, yeah, our project has to be done by December 2017. The Basin Project, which is a different group of folks, I think they have a 2018 date. Yeah, but they, they, the first meeting was about right. that, and they said that there was going to be this summer, uh-huh, and we still have it. Oh, is it in August? I thought it was in August. I, I think, think it's late summer. Although they come to the portal now, maybe. I went two times, yeah. two months ago, because she's a... Yeah. Sharon Rose, project manager, she was at portal now, maybe. So can you tell me how they come about to our maintenance costs? Our intent today was to Majority had the bump outs on probably Maine and Market. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah, and looking at this, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to get where Maine is. Which one's that? Is that Maine? So here's Maine, so there's only two, and Market, there's four. And Market is the street that most people are concerned about because well, it's, it's already been on the diet and it's really caused problems for the people that live there in the private Okay, that's, that's why we want your input. We appreciate that. So of the bump outs, we're only talking six, seven, or eight of the 27, so it's not the entire area. And the bump outs are from input we got at, from other folks that, you know, the... Well, actually, well, some of the input we got was from the guy the, called LC and Shine Contracting, and yeah, they're not in that immediate area. But you know, you, if they already settled up with the bike people, that it's not going to go into the bike lane, then it's probably just coming out of the sidewalk. Yeah. That, that the bump out is bump out, not the bump. Right. Like, right. You know, a lot of people have bump outs on their next group that they just put in over there. And it usually comes out to where, I mean. But, but. We're going to come out, but we won't come out to where. So and so, it's going to make, that's probably where a bus would normally come down Market Street. Yeah. Well, I, I know the bus will be driving most of the time because the traffic is backed up. Well, actually, yeah. the bus will stay in the lane because there's only one lane. It's not going to pull in and out of every block. Yeah. So every block, there will be a stop for the bus. And, and the NR attendant is. And don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with the NR. Main Street because Main Street is so wide. Right. But that's not uh, and, and, But it's also going to be too late. That's what I'm thinking about that. Too wide, you know. It's going to be too late eventually. It's not going to stay one way. So we'll be having two way traffic on Main, Main Street. Main Street will be coming two way. It will eventually. We can't stop it. Uh, why can't we stop it? <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. So we'll take it into account. We'll go back with, with all our information. Again, our 10 of the bump outs, yes, they'll be bump outs. They'll come out. 
but they won't interrupt bike paths that are there. They won't interrupt what is the legal traffic paths that are there. If you want to convince well, that's the house, house about the last meeting, yeah. because we were talking about, we were talking about 17th and Croft. Do you know what it was? Well, I mean, I don't know where 17th is, but I don't know. Well, I, mean, I know I've probably been down the street, but I don't, you know, unless you see it. It looks like an animal. How am I, how am yeah. I supposed to decide on if it should have trees, grass, or, yeah. or whatever, rough house, noble house? I mean, if you just come down my street, you know I'm going to be there. But that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Well, the input is, is what you would like to see. It would be very difficult for us to walk around the entire area at every intersection. Uh, I think I've heard today that the input is is that we probably don't like bump outs. Well, because it's so busy. Right. Well, I, 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 I think the input that we may have heard today is that we don't like bump outs. I'm not going to necessarily say that they're out of the, out of the extreme. Well, what we maybe should do is, in some of the areas where we're proposing bump outs, is try to get with some of the more immediate people that would be affected by that. But the immediate people are going to be affected is everybody using Market Street to go Market Street. Right. And I can just say they're not here, but a lot of people that were in the area, and up to the day, everybody we've talked to has been very positive and wanted the bump outs. Up, up to the day. Uh, everybody we have talked to today, uh, up to the day, well, Sherry Bryan Hamilton, who lives in the area, she thought it was a great idea. Uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, this is why we have these meetings, so, and, and we're not, I'm, we came to you because the four or five meetings we've had prior to this, bump outs was what everybody said, oh, that's a good idea. Everybody yeah. wants to say thank you. Right. We want it to be nice, we want it to be clean, we want it to be, you know, well, well, of course, it's, we, and we, I, not, I mean, it, we're all working on the same goals, right. but unless you live here, which we do, right. there's too much There's too much upon Market Street as it is, is what I'm saying with the okay. well, well, back. Yeah, I think trees and grass would be pretty, but go ahead. If you keep the political people in their little group, the business people in their little group, and the residents in their little group, then the three groups now look at uh, Look, I, I would feel misrepresented if you went back and said the Portland residents didn't support yeah. bond caps because that's not what you said. All right, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say, say that. that. I didn't say that. No, I said, if, well, what I've heard from this group is you have concerns about bump outs. I've heard that. Market Street. Market Street. Right. Right. Yes, we can do that. Okay. And I'm in agreement with the bump outs. I don't think, I don't know, like you talk. That's okay, Jerry. I don't think that it's going to affect the bus that much. Um, the bump outs are in a location that is already a corner where no one's supposed to park. Half the time, half the time people do park there. I've seen buses that don't pull up to the side that actually get close. I don't think there will be a big, big problem with it. There might be during certain rush hours, but the, the overall aspect of it, I think the components look good, and I think it's a nice suggestion. Let, let me just clarify one thing, too, again. We're not taking lane capacity away from the market. Yeah. We are not taking uh, any capacity. We're not modifying bike lanes. We've talked with public works. We've talked with the highway both about the, the design of that. There are some very wide areas of those corners uh, that would be ideal for bump outs if that's what we want to do. But we, we hear you loud and clear. There's a, there's a legitimate safety concern could we, that we need could to Could we see how far it went out? I mean, could yeah, you go out there and show us how far it would go out to? It's just the car width, isn't it? There's a parking aisle. Yeah, roughly a car width. Yeah, roughly a car width. Every day and come out of car with. So that would be in the bike lane. And, and it doesn't affect the striping of the bike way at all. No, because the bike lane is right next to it because it's actually where a car would already be parked, not where a car is driving. Is that 
Okay, and then to answer the question, I think we could take go out there in the afternoon and just walk around. And, and what you could do is, if you would like to do that, um, Jason Dempster. I mean, I'm just saying, if the rest of you know you have the right time, you know, in the mornings, going down town, you can see. So. If you would like that, please, at the end of this, get with Jason. Jason Dempster is project manager, and he will get your contact information, and then we can get back out there. So I'm going to go over some of the questions. Uh, the first question is, can you send map and landscape choices to the Portland anchor before May 15th? And I think, based on everything we just talked about, uh, it would be very difficult to have that done by, uh, because we haven't settled on what we're going to be doing. Well, it's a news paper, so you could, don't have to have a decision. If you sent those uh, slides that you already okay. have. That, that helps. We can do that. I, I, I guess I took it literal as landscape choices, like, you know, like some people ask what types of trees, and we will be, we will be happy to do that. That's why we're here. Um, there are still cit citizens in the neighborhood, backyards, cisterns, sorry. There are still cisterns in the backyards. Find use, of, can we use these in a way to make them safe and useful? The only problem with that would be is, is that anything on private property, we have, we have a hard time getting on private property or doing anything uh, on private property, uh, especially uh, is the question, uh, can you find a use for these? So is there a question, can we route some of the water to the cisterns from this project in a way to make them safe and useful? Uh, we, we would like to do a lot more with, with private citizens, but the, the only question about that is, is that the only way to truly make that, say we have to depend on this project to collect a certain amount of flow to meet the consent decree requirement. If 10 backyards are part of that, then we'd have to put a deed restriction on those backyards that forever they would keep their backyards the way it is. And a lot of property owners just don't want to do that. Uh, and they, we'd have to guarantee that they would maintain it, that it would work forever. And, you know, because we're not putting in a big basin, uh, these things have to work for our great grandkids. I mean, these are things we have to put in place that are, have to work and beyond. So, uh, but what we could do is, I think, if anybody has anything that they would like to use their private property to help with the project. Uh, Jason meets with private properties all the time on things that they could do on site. So we, we'd be happy to work with anybody to see what they could do and try to get something in place. Because the more we all do, the better it's going to do. But as far as doing something to where we're relying on it for this project, it would be difficult uh, to do that. Um, and then could alleys and areas low impact traffic? Well, There's a question about alleys and doing project in the alleys, but the places we're doing the projects are specifically picked because that's where the water's already drained. Uh, so they're the most effective uh, both for cost and for collecting as much water as we can. Uh, that's why we're picking those areas. Um, most of the flow goes to the intersection, so that's We, we would love to do things in the alleys if there was catch basins or if there was drainage that was collected in the alleyways, but all the alleys and all the streets and all the roads drain to the intersections where the catch basins are. So that's where we have to put our, our infrastructure uh, and save the cost. And the last one, oh, 
One, the last card I have is not sure what is going on off 17th Street. Well, the rest of the rest of 17th Street would just be the normal intersections without the bump outs. No, I'm talking about. You didn't really talk about three or kind of a whole lot to say about the security. Well, from the input that we have, the data is is that most of the residential intersections would just be the normal intersections without the bump outs because of the traffic in the lane and the parking. And then the only area, so that's predominantly a little bit of one and then two is the predominantly residential areas, some of the residential areas. But, and then it was the business areas and mainly on Market and Main where we had the wider streets and we had what we felt was the areas that do the bump outs, we would do the bump outs. Also, we would do the bump, you know, some businesses to where Again, talked about if, if it, was, it was approved to put in the, the low maintenance, less maintenance stuff to where they could do their business and not have to worry about mowing a strip of grass in front of their business once a week. So the majority of our bump outs was only going to happen in the business areas along Main and Market. And then all the other intersections you see are there. Anything residential would be just a normal street the way it is, but we'd have the grass strip and then the trees. So it did become a two questions. Uh, I feel that MSD or the city should install wrought iron trash containers and benches at or around the bump out locations. Great input. That's, that's a good idea. Uh, and matter of fact, we, on one of the areas in, uh, uh, I forgot it. Let's see, it's at 1.30. Story Avenue, I was gonna say Butchertown Story Avenue, we did that. We got the wrought iron fence around the tree wells and stuff. And, and here's what's, what's funny. It's, it's, it's just, it's, I, I love how everybody, and I truly do, and, and any frustration I have is, is because I wanna answer questions and, and if I can't answer questions, but that's an area that is unhappy with the wrought iron and the, and the fences and stuff, and they want us to remove them now. So, yeah, I'm just saying, it's just kind of funny how, this looks great. We got black rod iron fence, and now we get rid of them. I mean, you know. I think the bump outs are beautiful. Right. But I want to make sure it's something that we can live with for another right. years. Yeah. So, yeah, we do a project, and, and we learn from it, and we think everything's great, and then, and then we, you know, and uh, so that's when I think the, the, the black rod iron looks awesome, and then, but. trees we've already replaced one and we're going to place another tree where and these these tree wells are probably four six feet off the curve it's, yeah, it's a very busy road but they're uh, probably four feet yeah so and they they come over onto the sidewalk and run over trees so um, what did you think about is at least you know you see what is going to be observed what's going to be Pretty much, and I can't remember. Was that the beginning? Was that before the? There, there's going to be some disturbance in those areas. Uh, sorry. Two 
Too many slides, folks. So that's the cross section. And then, you know, for an example, and it's hard to tell from there, please come up. Uh, where we do our work, a majority of it will be at the intersection, and then these blue areas are the underground storage pipes. So they'll be, we're, we're going to have some construction issues while this project is going in place. Yes? We're picking areas where there's the least amount of utility conflicts. We're going to be off to the side of one side of the street. So we're going to be one side. One side of the street and then the intersections and probably phase it working our way down, finishing one area as we get to the next area. Um August of 2015. Yes. But we're hoping that again, uh, once it's done and we come back and you know, things, we feel at least we have a project that when it's done, it'll look better. Uh, so. Seventh Street is going to probably have the most of the digging because that is where that large, there's a 42 inch, a 42 inch by 60 inch diameter pipe that collects all the storm flow. That's where we have to go. It, yeah, right, right. It's. I mean, I didn't want to use it, but it's sort of, somebody at one of our meetings was like, well, that's why you put the bridge over the high river, because that's where you have to go, and that's where 71 and 65 and all the interstates are. And it's sort of the same thing, is that our main highway for the stormwater is 17th Street. That's that large four-foot by five-foot diameter pipe. And all the catch basins that collect the water and dump into that pipe are at the intersections. Metro wouldn't let us do that. We have to get right away permits to do our construction in Metro. We have, we'll have to give them a detailed traffic plan and, and what we want to do. And Metro wouldn't let us do that. And then the last question was, will this project help with the sewer smell in the Portland Canal area? And my initial answer would be probably not. Um, a lot of that smell is, is because it is a combined system and when we go for a prolonged period without rain, what keeps that smell out and the flushing of the sewers, it sewers in the combined system, it gets septic, it starts smelling. Uh, there could be some times, we may help it sometimes, but will there ever be times where you could never have potential sewer smells in these areas? Unfortunately, that's a side effect of having combined sewers. And there, the, the, the cost in dollars to go and separate the sewers where they would be completely isolated. Talking about a major construction project, we would be, we would be tearing up every street in the, in the city. So to answer the question is, could we ultimately ever take care of the smell? I don't think this project will help with that. It's the nature of a combined sewer system. And then when you go through prolonged periods when it's dry and you don't have the rain and the drainage water that flushes, flushes the sewer out. Those are the two Portland projects, and and you know, and that's why we decided sort of like the very first meeting we had was a joint meeting because we are in the neighborhood, and then what we found out was uh, we were causing confusion because a basin project is much different and a much different potential impact to the community than a tree project. And matter of fact, some entities said, you don't need to come to our meetings or our, because 
your trees. We're okay, you know. We want people to come to us, talk to us about the basin. So that's why we decided at that point to separate them and then have the two separate meetings, hopefully to try to define between the two. Yeah, trying to help and say, hey, we're going to be in your neighborhood roughly the same time. We're all going to communicate together. Kind of, at least on that aspect, made it a little bit more confusing. So y'all will give us uh, email heads up on the meeting for the basin with the emails that we gave you already. And, oh. For this project or for the Portland Wall? Yeah. Uh, that's another project manager that's sending them out, but uh, I can make sure that she's aware of what our email list is when she sends out hers. Uh, I think they're I want to say it's August, but don't run out of here if it's if it's September. But I believe they plan on coming in here with in August. So please, is there any other questions while we're here? Yes, sure. No, it's great. No, don't be sorry. Uh, in all of this, so you're you're going to be tearing up sidewalks, right? Rebuilding sidewalks and green space. And I have not done a real survey of it myself, but did anybody ever mention that in some streets in Portland we still have limestone uh, curves? And for the character of the neighborhood, we would, really, we would really like to keep it. It's good for property values, it's good for historic preservation values. So again, that's not really all. That's good. We need to put that down. I don't really know if that's true. Where it is on 17th Street and Bank? Of course, it was. It used to be everywhere. But I was thinking on 17th Street. Yeah. I noticed that coming up with asphalt on the right. Well, when they came back in with the big infrastructure money, you know, what was that? The economic development. The stimulus tax. Oh, yeah. uh, they went into sidewalks, which was great. We did a huge survey all over the neighborhood where we needed better sidewalks, but we didn't realize that what they were going to do was come in and pour concrete over all the limestone. That's what they did. Okay. The limestone comes out. have talked about that and we think we are doing the best we can to address that and because we want to enhance what's there and when we walk away you know maybe because everybody just was busy and didn't pay attention to things but maybe now because we put some trees and stuff people maybe slow down a little bit or enjoy the thing and then oh I didn't know there was limestone curves or oh, I've actually heard that from projects that people now because they'll kind of like stroll maybe through the area before when it was like a fast brisk run to the area and you know, I didn't know that this building did that or this building you know so w we are hoping that that will be the long term that it's 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 better you have anything Pat Jason any other yep. That's no problem. If if you get with Jason at this meeting that you are specifically interested, he will make sure that we set up an email group for that site visit and get back with everybody. Um, so, all right. Well, again, I, I do appreciate um, you, your input. Is it's, it's why we're here. So, and it's why we're at the beginning of the project and not at the end and just showing up and saying, here's what we're doing. So thank you. Have a good night.